This is part two of our video series where we create a Google Apps Script system to pull contact information from our Gmail messages and our Google Calendar events, bring it to a Google Sheet where we can review the contacts and then select which ones we want to sync into Google Contacts so that we have a single source of truth for all of our contacts. In the previous video, we worked on the code that pulls the data from Gmail and Calendar, brings it into the Google Sheet, and then takes the information that we already have in Google Sheet and dedupes it so that we are writing only net new contacts to our sheet. So now we need to continue where we left off, which was to integrate Google Contacts. We want to pull the Google Contacts information and dedupe that as well so that we're not storing the same contacts over and over again. To work with Google Contacts, you need to add the advanced service people. So you want to head to the IDE and in the editor, click on the plus icon next to services, then scroll and look for people. Click add. And now you're integrated with the API. I'm going to go back to our fetch. The last time we looked at the new users after we deduped the saved ones from our sheet. So now let's look at the contacts in Google Contacts. So first we want to get them out of the system. Let's create a new function to get the contacts. The way this function is going to work is we're going to use a while loop to page through the results that we're getting from the API. Assuming that you have a lot of contacts already in Google Contacts, it's not possible to get all of them in one API call. We have to make several calls and each time we send with the call the number of the page that we are interested in and in return the API will give us the names that are associated with that page. We will iterate as long as the response includes a page token and that will be our signal that there's more data to fetch from the server. First, I'll define an array to collect our contacts. I'll call it uh, G for Google. G contacts equal an empty array. And I'm going to define a next page token. Could be null. And here's our do while loop and we will iterate as long as there is a page token we're going to call the API using the people that we just added people connections and then the list method we want to pass people to me, in other words, my contacts, and then comma. And now we're going to pass in a bunch of options. I mean, people is not defined. First, we need to identify the fields that we want to pull. It's just email addresses. Okay. 
Then we want to indicate how many results should come with every response. And then we want to pass our page token. So what page we're on. Initially it's null, so it will be the first. Let's log the response and see what we have. I need to authorize the use of the people API. See your C and download your contacts. And I see that I have connections. Let's predefine the response. So it's easier to read. Okay, so I see that I'm receiving an object that has a connections key here with an array of connections. Each connection is an object that has an email addresses key. The array has one or more email addresses specified in an object with a value key that contains the email address. Ultimately, I want to pull out only the email addresses from the Google Contacts because that's what I'm going to use to deduct my data. So let's do that. First, I'll get the connections. If there are connections, we are going to iterate over the connections and get the email arrays. Because the connections are an array and email, the emails are also an array, it's a nested array, so we need to use a flat map here. This will extract our email arrays. You can try to log this. I'm getting the email objects in a single array. Now I need to extract the value of the value key. So again, I'm going to use a flat map because each object inside the email array has multiple objects in it. It's possible that the contact does not have an email address. Maybe I just stored name and phone number. So I have to verify that there is an email array. If there is, then we're going to return 
a clean version of email array dot value. Let's try to log the email addresses now. I'm getting the email addresses in a flat array, which is good. So we're still in our do while loop. The last thing we need to do is to concatenate the new email addresses with our gcontacts array. And now we need to send the next page token with our next request. So essentially when the response is received, we get with it the next page token. And that's what we're using to make our subsequent call in our page token. So Google is telling us the next page token that you need to use is X and that's what you put in as the page token. The last thing we want to do is we want to filter empty records in case there are ones without email addresses. Now we can test our function. We're getting the email addresses. So now we need to dedupe them from our new users. We'll use the same method that we did before using the filter I'm going to copy these two lines and replace the Google contacts into it I can see that I'm getting duplicate email addresses from Google Contacts, so we need to clean that up. We can go back to our function of get Google Contacts, and here, right before returning the filtered list, we can dedupe it using set. I'm just going to move this line up here. So the way to do it is you have an array and you use it to initialize a set. The set uh, guarantees unique primitive values, so we can do that. And now we need to convert the set back to an array, so we're going to expand it into an array and return the modified array. Let's log the array again. And I don't have duplicate email addresses anymore.
can remove the log as well as this log here and we have all the data brought into our Google Sheet so at this point I have these rows if I delete them and I fetch new contacts I am getting the net new contacts that do not appear either in Google Contacts or in my ignored or ignored users or ignored domain. And now we need to work on pushing the data to Google Contacts. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new file called Sync. So in CommonJS, we have the own open function that has the sync contacts. That's the function we want to define now. We want to initialize the script. And the first thing we want to do is get all the data out of the new user sheet starting from the second row to the last row in C column And we want to get the values. We're going to filter the rows to get the users that we defined as save users. So let's say that I have this guy and I want to save that user. We're going to define the save users by filtering the rows we're going to look at the third column and ensure that it is set to save user And we only want the first two columns, so we can use a map to take row and just return an array with row 0 and row 1. So assuming that we have at least one user that we set as save user, we want to operate on that list. Google Contacts requires us to send the given name and a family name of a contact that we're adding, so we need to split the name using a space. I'm going to create contacts as a variable and use map to iterate over the save users. And here I'm going to split the name to give a name And the rest of the names, in case there are multiple tokens with multiple spaces, 
we'll go into family name. Obviously, you can use a different logic. And I'm splitting the name on spaces. And then family name needs to be joined back. And now I can return a contact person. That'll be an object that has names. Have to set up a value with the email address from the user. Now we can call the uh, people API. Using batch create contacts. We'll pass in the contacts and a read mask that specifies the fields. And we can log the response. Need to authorize the right. And I see that I have a created people response. Let's look at Google Contacts. And I have Brian Rogers added to Google Contacts. We successfully pushed the new contacts that we had in the sheet into Google Contacts. Now we need to handle moving the rest of the rows based on the other values. So we can ignore user, ignore domain, we want to be able to move those to their respective sheets. So to do that, we're going to filter this list each time on a different value and then copy the filtered list to its destination sheet. Let's deal with the ignore users. Can copy this line and change the filter to ignore user. You can also copy the map because I only want the first two columns, I don't need the action. I'm going to define a next row variable. And if we have more than one ignore the user, we're going to set their information in the ignore the user sheet.
let's say we want to ignore this user. I can see that the user now appears in my ignored users sheet. Now we can do the same with ignore domains. Here I want to return only the domain from the email. And I need to return an array that includes the domain because I need to have one array per row. I can use the slice. starting from the index of the at sign, plus one. Let's test that out. So I can see that I ignored the user with domain yao.com and now yao.com is listed here. The last thing we need to do is to essentially anything that was selected needs to be removed so that we're not duplicating it. For example, if I do save user and run it, it's going to create multiple entries for the same user. We don't want that. So the way to do that is essentially once we're done sending the information to Google Contacts and moving everything to the other sheets, it's to take anything that was selected and to delete it from this sheet so that the only thing remaining is are the uh, rows with no action selected. So let's do that. filtering on empty string. The first thing we want to do is delete everything that's in the sheet starting from row 2 and then writing the filtered rows back into the sheet. In case the sheet started with a lot of rows, we want to clear out all of them so that we're left with only the rows that were not selected. To do that, we need to clear the content of the sheet.
I'm going to start at A2 all the way to C. And I'm going to use clear content to remove the values and chain onto it clear data validations. That's going to remove all the drop downs. So I don't end up with an empty row that has a drop down. Now we can check if there are any unselected rows. Then we can now write back the unselected rows and add their drop down menus. Now we can copy the rules that we have in fetch and edit here. Except that I need to change new users. Let's reset the spreadsheet to see that it works. I'm going to empty out, ignore users, ignore the names, and new users. Now I'm going to fetch contacts. Let's empty out. The Google contacts will save this user, ignore this user, and ignore this domain. And let's add another one. Let's say that there was another one that was added. And this one we're not selecting. Now we're going to sync. And we can see that our new users sheet is updated. The only remaining row is the one that we didn't select. It appears and it has its action drop down menu ready to go. Ignored user has the user that we selected. The domain is ignored. I go to Google Contacts and can see that this user is there. So this is it for the system that we built to fetch new contacts from Gmail and Calendar and push them into Google Contacts. One thing you could do is set up a trigger to run the fetch Gmail calendar contacts automatically on a periodic basis. I hope you find this useful and see you on the next video.